How's everybody doing? Good, good. Uh, man, the Holy Spirit's already moving this morning. Uh, it was great to hear all the testimonies and the, uh, the prayers are going to go forth. Um, for you guys, whoever that does not know me, uh, my name is Bobby Chambers. I'm the associate pastor here. Um, so you guys get to hear me this morning. Uh, but we're, what we're going to do is um, we're going to finish up. I got a bad ring in that ear. Okay, all right. Sounds like I got a bad ring. Um, I'm going to do a little recap uh, for what, what we've covered, because this will be the last Sunday that we're covering Acts. Uh, for the past three Sundays, which really, if, if you really want to get the full gist of it, I mean, get on YouTube and watch the videos on YouTube. Uh, they're awesome. They'll change your life. Um, so for the first week, uh, we talked, Pastor Bill talked about the importance of prayer in the life of the early church, how important it is to have prayer and that the disciples had prayed for the Holy Spirit to, to come upon them uh, at the day of Pentecost. Uh, week, the number two, the second week, was he spoke about boldness, having boldness, where the Holy Spirit gives you boldness to speak to those things that are around you, speak to, uh, to be able to speak to people uh, that, that, come in con- that you come in contact with. Um, week three, which was last week, is the importance of Christian fellowship and generosity. Man, fellowship is, is, I think last week was probably, was really, really good because, man, we got to have fellowship. Amen. We got to fellowship with each other. And we got to be able to share with one another. We need to be able to be there for one another. Like this morning with the prayer. Man, what better way is it to have a prayer in need yeah. and have fellow, fellow believers with you pray for you over that need? Amen. And, and, and declare with you. You know, the word says, where two or more are gathered in my name, there, it is, there I am so also. So, God's there in the midst of that when everybody's praying for that, for that situation. So this week we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit in guiding the church's mission. And we're going to ask three questions. And we're going to answer these questions as we go along. <laughs> Number one is, am I sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit? Number two is, how does the Spirit empower and direct me today? And three, what is my mission local, locally and globally? So, am I sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit? Ask yourself this question. Am I so in tune with God that I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit? Amen. Right after I first got saved, I always thought, though, that the Holy Spirit, you know, whenever they, they tell you this stuff, I kept expecting that the Holy Spirit was going to be a loud, boisterous voice, you know, that said, Bobby, go and do this. No, it's not. It's not. It's your voice in your head. It's your voice that's speaking to you. And I, <laughs> I kept waiting for the loud noise, the loud, boisterous voice of God to say, don't do this or don't do that, you know. But what I was looking for was not coming. And when I finally realized, when I've, when I had this urge in, my, in myself to not do something or to go do something, I thought, well, that sounds like myself telling me that. Is that me? Well, it is, but it's not. It's the Holy Spirit that's speaking into me. So we're going to talk about Philip and, and the Ethiopian. It's kind of long, the scriptures are calling along, but uh, Brother David will have them up on the board for you. Acts 8, 26 through 40. As for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, Go south down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under the Kandake, the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and he was now returning. Seated in his carriage, he was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over and walk along beside the carriage. Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, do you understand what you're reading? The man replied, how can I unless someone instructs me? And he urged Philip to come up into the carriage and sit with him. The passage of scripture he had been reading was this. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb in silent before the shearers. He did not open his mouth. He was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or someone else? 
So beginning with the same scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. As they rode along, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop, and they went down to the river. And Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Meanwhile, Philip found himself farther north at the town of Azotus. He preached the good news there and in every town along the way until he came to Caesarea. Philip was led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit told him. Well, at first an angel appeared to him and told him. And then the Holy Spirit told him, go walk by that carriage. Philip's heart was right with God at that time to be able to listen to the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit told him, that's a guy that needs Jesus. Yeah. It's, it's not in the text. <laughs> <laughs> but he, I, I could imagine that as soon as, as Philip heard the Holy Spirit tell him, I, bet, I would think he probably got excited because the Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over and walk along beside the carriage. Then it says Philip ran over. So Philip was excited. He thought, man, this is my chance. I'm going to be able to witness to this, this, to this guy. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. I'm excited. Yeah. So with that being said, if we are to be a church on fire, we must be sensitive to and be, tuned, be in tune with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Good with things that are going on nowadays, we have got to be on fire. We have got to be on fire for God, and we have got to be on fire with the Holy Spirit inside of us. we got to allow it to burn within us so much that we run to speak to the person that needs Jesus. Instead of just saying, well, okay, I'll go. We need to have that excitement, and that's what the fire does. <laughs> I heard this, uh, we used to have this evangelist, and he would always say, when you get saved, you're excited to, that you, so excited that you take on hell with a water pistol. Yeah. That's the same way. That's the same way. That's the fire that burns inside you. When the Holy Spirit, when you're allowing the Holy Spirit to, to take control and to speak through you. But we've got to be sensitive. And we've got to, we've got to listen, guys. I mean, and I know it's hard. I know it's hard. There's so many distractions going on around the world. I mean, you got presidential elections, you got wars going on, you got uh, things being taught in the schools that aren't appropriate, you got kids shooting kids, you got, there's tons of stuff distracting that's distracting in the world. But we can't allow that to distract us from what the, what the Holy Spirit wants to do through us. And that's how the enemy is working. He's using these distractions and these things that are coming against the world to affect us and to affect the church. We can't allow that. We've got to be on fire. We've got to continue that fire. God has a direction for each and every one of us. He had a direction for Philip. Yeah. Philip fulfilled that direction. He, he was taken away, and then he went preaching along in every town along the way. He's preaching the good news. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will lead us into uncomfortable situations or tests. Now, how are we going to respond or react? Sometimes the Holy Spirit puts us in tight spots. Yeah, he does. It's never fun. But the thing is, is we wouldn't be there if God didn't trust us. And the Holy Spirit didn't have faith that we could do what he's calling us to do. I take, for instance, Jesus. He was, when he was led into the, into the wilderness, he was led in the wilderness by, by the Spirit. Luke 4, 1 through 2 says, Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. Jesus ate nothing at all that time and became very hungry. So Jesus was led away into the, de into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Do we think that Jesus would have been led away by the Spirit if he wasn't ready? 
Granted, I know he's the Son of God. But he was still human. If I believe that if he was not ready and in tune, which, I mean, <laughs> it was kind of hard for him not to be in tune, I guess, but he wouldn't have been able to go into that test like that. And that was a, that was a big test. Now, the same is for us. How many times do we find ourselves in that strong test or a tight spot? How do we react or how do we respond? Yeah. I'll be honest with you. There's been times I have reacted instead of responding. And it has not been a good outcome. And then God slaps me upside the head and says, let's try this again. That's not ever fun. I don't like getting slapped upside the head. I don't have any hair, so it hurts. <laughs> but there's, there, <laughs> I've, I've failed so many tests and trials where the Holy Spirit has spoke to me. There's been times that you might be in Walmart or something and the Holy Spirit will nudge you to go pray for that person or to talk to them. What are they going to think? What are they going to say? Are they going to laugh at me? Are they going to think I'm crazy? Am I going to be carried out of here in a straitjacket? No. And if you say no, I'm not going to do that. You just failed that test. Yeah. We get tested every day. There's people in your jobs, there's people in your, in your lives that need to hear Jesus. Are you sensitive to the Holy Spirit when He's telling you to go pray for them? Or to go talk to them? Or to share Jesus with them? It's kind of quiet. <clears throat> um, but also remember this, that the Holy Spirit won't lead us into a trap either. He's not going to lead us into where we're trapped. It's just a small test. And he'll give you another chance. He will give you another chance. I mean, if, if he didn't give me more chances, I wouldn't be standing here in front of you guys tonight. <laughs> so, um, number two, how does the Spirit empower and direct me today? Listen, if you're saved, baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, you're empowered. Amen. I mean, we got the power. Yeah. We got to use it. Who else got the power? Amen. Yeah. Okay. I think I just think about that. Uh, a lot of you older guys in here, the uh, power he or he man, or t TV show. I've got the power. You know, he'd hold the sword up, um, and that's like the Holy Spirit. I mean, you know, stand up. I got the power. I got the power of the Holy Spirit inside me. So He's already empowered us. So let's look at Barnabas and Saul. Acts 13, 1 through 4. It says, Among the prophets and teachers of the church of Antioch of Syria were Barnabas, Simeon, Lucius, Menaean, childhood companion of the king of Herod, and Saul. One day these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting. The Holy Spirit said, Appoint Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. So after more fasting and prayer, the men laid their hands on them and sent them on their way. The Holy Spirit told Barnabas and Saul for what he already called them. They were already empowered. They knew what they were supposed to do. Because it says right there, the Holy Spirit said, appoint Barnabas and Saul for the special work which I have called them. So they've already been called. They just needed the confirmation. Yeah. They needed the confirmation from the other, other disciples that it's okay to go ahead and go. So the rest of the church empowered them and sent them on their way. It's okay for you to go. The Holy Spirit releases you to go. And they went along and they empowered them to go. They already knew what they were supposed to do. But they needed, they needed that from the rest of the church so that they could go ahead and go. And that's what's, that's what's really cool. Sometimes we don't sometimes we don't hear from the spirit and we need that other person to give us confirmation. It's like I'll give you for instance before I was called to preach I didn't know it. God woke me up one one morning and uh 
So you're not doing what I'm calling you to do. And he said, I'm going to call you to preach. Well, I went and told my pastor at the time. He's like, well, we already knew that. I'm like, why didn't you tell me? And he's like, well, you had to hear it for yourself. But that was confirmation. When you go to somebody, your pastor, another individual, and you share that with them, and they say, well, what have you been waiting on? Why didn't you already do that? That's confirmation for you. And, and, <laughs> and a lot of times the confirmation is, is because we doubt ourselves. We doubt if we're actually hearing from the Spirit. We doubt if that voice that we heard is actually for the Spirit. Because when I heard that, I thought, man, my past was horrible. I did some stupid stuff. I mean, I, I mean it was just... Uh, and when you hear that, you're thinking, God, you, you're making a mistake. <laughs> you're looking the wrong way because this is not me. But when somebody has that confirmation that sets right with your spirit, and then it ignites your spirit because you know, you're like, okay, I did hear from God, and I'm not just being crazy. Yeah. So the confirmation is, is kind of key to some of us sometimes, especially if, if you struggle with a little bit of doubt or you kind of have some down on yourself a little bit where you, you know, you've had a rough past or you don't think that you're usable. When somebody else uses that confirmation, that, that just Come on. That, that, that boosts you up. And we're supposed to boost each other up anyway. So that's, that's just, it's just awesome for that to happen. The Holy Spirit has already put a calling on your life. Are you praying and seeking for His guidance? He's put the calling on your life and He's speaking to you. He's going to tell you what it is. So when somebody else tells you there's confirmation, that's your calling. Why am I here? It's your microphone, brother. Oh, is it my, oh, sorry guys. I thought, man, I'm hearing something going on. Uh, so are you praying and seeking His guidance? Man, ask him. Ask the Holy Spirit to share with you. God's not greedy. The Holy Spirit's not greedy. He wants everybody to fulfill their calling. Just pray and seek. John 16, 13 through 15. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own, but will tell you what He has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said, the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. So the Spirit will tell you. He's going to tell you where he wants you to go. Oh, sorry. So he empowers us to stay on that track. And listen, we stray, we stray off the track sometimes. Sometimes. It's easy to get sidetracked. I mean, it's <laughs> from the first time I, I did my uh, credential class, there was like, what, eight years in between before I finished them. I mean, I was, I was off track for a little bit. So it's easy to get off track. But don't ever lose what God's called you to do. Because He won't ever take it from you. It's always going to be there. Are you praying and seeking Him to fulfill that calling. Because he's already brought it to your mind. Sometimes we have visions. Sometimes we have dreams. Sometimes he's just flat out told you. Act on it. Seek God. Seek the Holy Spirit. Because he wouldn't tell you if he didn't mean it. Amen. And he wouldn't give it to you if he didn't want to use you. Everyone in this room can be used. So if you're sitting there thinking, well, he can't use me. If you're sitting there thinking, I ain't got time. Oh, you got time. Because God's going to help you make time. Man, you guys ain't shouting me down here, so uh, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, but we got to pray and seek the Holy, Holy Spirit. Number three, what is my mission locally and globally? 
sorry, this keeps. Um, globally, now not all of us are called to be missionaries. I know I'm not. But we can still support them. Yes. And we can still pray for them. Amen. And we can, man, reach out to them. I think I've got like two or three that are more than that probably that email me each month. Reach out to them. Say, man, I'm praying for you guys. That, that is our mission to support missionaries. Because mm-hmm. they've been called to do that. And us in this room may not have been. But we still need to, to support them and pray for them. The church's mission is that we seek and save those that are lost. Yeah. That's it. That's our mission. There's empty chairs in here. And there's empty souls out there. We've got to seek and save those that are lost. Can we force them to come in here? No. I think that's illegal nowadays. You can't tie them up and bring them in. I know. <laughs> I wish it wasn't. <clears throat> um, there are people in your jobs. There's people, your neighbors. There are people everywhere that need Jesus. Amen. Our mission is to seek and save those that are lost. Amen. Now, listen, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying uh, go and run around telling everybody, you're going to hell if you don't change. I tried that, didn't work. <laughs> I tried it on my mom, and that really did not work, I'm telling you that. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'll tell you that story later. It was not good. Um, but you, you can't force it on. You have to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, to guide you to them. And listen, when you get to them, you may be thinking, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? Oh, oh, man. The Holy Spirit will bring it to you. Say, hey man, I think you're you got some something going on. Then they'll pour it out. They just, I mean, it opens up like the floodgates. Do you ever think, you know, some sometimes you you go somewhere and people come up to you all the time. I was talking to Mike uh, last week. He was talking about somebody that had come up to him and just started sharing sharing their life with him and sharing stuff. Man, that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is directed you to them or directed them to you and they know that you are a vessel for God. And that they, you, they can pour into you so you can pour out into them. That's what people need. This hurting, hurting world needs people that's going to listen. They need people that are sensitive to the Holy Spirit that can say, I'm going to stand with you and declare that that cancer is going to be gone. In the name of Jesus, your kids are going to be saved. The world needs people like that. That's, and new life is that. Amen. We are that. You guys are that. I believe it. I see it. And I know it. I want to get fired up here in a minute. <laughs> Acts 13, 47 says, For the Lord gave us this commandment or command, when he said, I have made you a light to the Gentiles to bring salvation to the farthest corners of the earth. Your mission field's outside these four walls, guys. Yeah. It's everywhere. Amen. I know Walmart is a bad place to go, but it's at Walmart too. <laughs> My wife hates going to Walmart. I hate going to Walmart, really. <laughs> but... Uh, it is at Walmart. It's at the restaurant. How are you treating that waitress when she does not give you very good service? How are you <laughs> How are you treating that family that's sitting right across from you that have kids that are annoying? <laughs> the reason why I say that is because <laughs> I'll be transparent. I messed up a couple weeks ago. We were sitting at Highway Pizza. And these kids over here, oh man, these kids just came. Oh my gosh, man. They were driving me nuts. 
they kept, they kept slapping each other's hands, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> well, it, they read it on my face. I didn't say anything, but I wasn't, I was not showing the Holy Spirit there. And I'm just being honest with you guys. I mean, this, this message here is stepping on my toes. So, um, yeah, how are, you, how are you acting in that situation? Are you getting mad? Are you letting it affect your, your time with your family? Come on. <clears throat> All right. It isn't just happenstance that we run into people who need prayer or are hurting or need someone to talk to. They're drawn to us by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And remember this. People were drawn to Jesus. Yes. Yes, sir. Yep. We are to be Christ-like. We are to be walking around like Jesus. We are Christ-like. We're supposed to be Christ-like. So people are drawn to us because the Spirit is in us. You might be asking yourself, might be the question might be asking yourself, why are people not drawn to me? And when you ask yourself that, you might, you might step on your own toes because you'd be thinking, well, maybe I'm not living in the Spirit. Maybe Christ isn't shining through me. That's very easy to, to not happen. I mean, like I said, things of this world make you mad. Drivers. <laughs> We might need an altar call for everybody for drivers, man. Whew. Oh, man. Man, oh, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whew. I mean, I, I drive a semi all day long, so, uh, yeah, drivers uh, really, whew, they test my, uh, they test my Jesus <laughs> every day. Yes. Um, but, you know, I mean, <laughs> when they cut you off, are you giving them a wave? <laughs> you know, uh, you know. I mean, it's how are you? How are you acting? I mean, it's you know. I mean, it's it's and we're. I mean, I'm being. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's how are you reacting when somebody does that? How are you reacting when people are getting you, getting under your skin? It really, it really affected me big with my kids. Quite a while back. I would let my anger get the best of me with my kids, and they, I wasn't showing Jesus to them when they were when I was getting on to them. And I let it get out of hand a few times, and it scared them. And God opened my eyes. How are you being Jesus to your kids when you're angry towards them? If you can't show Jesus to your own kids, how are you going to show Jesus to the strangers? If you can't witness to them, how are you going to witness to others either? <clears throat> Jesus gave us the Great Commission, which is the ultimate. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. He says it right there. Go and make disciples. Go and reach others. Reach the world. That's his instructions on what every believer's mission is. Everyone that's saved, that's our mission. Save those that are lost. Reach the ones that don't know him. However, we all have missions to pursue and fulfill. What's your mission? What's your calling? Not everybody's called to get up here and speak from the podium. I mean, I get that. But we all have a calling on our lives. Is it kids' ministry? Is it youth? Is it media? Is it singing? Whatever it is. We all have a calling on our lives. We've got to seek God and ask Him what that calling is. 
Now listen, sometimes, sometimes you might be you know, later in the age that, that he revealed it to you because you're not ready. So are you allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you to fulfill the mission God has called you to do? Sorry, I'm not going to use this of me anymore. <laughs> and here I'm going to, I'm going to start. I'm going to start. To, I'm going to start to close. Talking about Paul, all throughout the Book of Acts, or towards the end of Acts, Paul. You know, we know the story. He was actually Saul of Tarsus. On the road to Damascus, God changed his life. Then he became one of the. I, I believe, or I feel, that he was one of the greatest prophets, one of the greatest disciples in the Bible. He was led by the Holy Spirit everywhere he went. He didn't, he didn't go anywhere that the Holy Spirit didn't tell him. And, and think about this. If God can take somebody that was killing Christians and hated Christians, hated God, turn his life around and he won millions of Christians yep. to God, what do you think he can do for you? Come on. I mean, it's, it's all the Holy Spirit. So Acts 20, 22 through 24, says, And now I am bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me, except that the Holy Spirit tells me <clears throat> in city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus. The work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. Paul knew. It says here that the Holy Spirit had told him that jail and suffering lie ahead. And yet he continued to do what the Holy Spirit led him to do. If the Holy Spirit was to tell each one of us in here, you're going to die for preaching the good news, how many of us would stop? I think, man, I don't want to die. But Paul knew that. He knew what life, he knew what ended. I mean, he'd seen it. He traveled all over. He traveled all over preaching the gospel. And yet he, he knew what was going to happen at the end. And if we read through Acts, I didn't put all this on there, but Paul tried to go, Jeru, go, to, Jer, go to Jerusalem a, f- a few times. But the Holy Spirit kept directing him, no, don't go to Jerusalem. Because the Holy Spirit knew that once he entered Jerusalem, yeah. that was going to be it. Yeah. In which they end up capturing him and keeping him in prison for, I don't know exactly how long, yeah, years. So I say that to this. You might want to go a different direction. The Holy Spirit has something different for you. The Holy Spirit keeps us from getting harm upon ourselves. And listen, a lot of times we cause our own harm. We cause our own stupidity. We cause our own junk that we get into because we don't listen to what the Holy Spirit led us to do. You hear that voice or you feel that nudge and you're like, nah, that ain't right. I'm going to do this. Then what happens? We start back at step one and we got to go through it again. After we've already suffered for doing what we wanted to do on our own. Because it ain't about you. It ain't about what we want to do. It's okay to have dreams. It's okay to have plans. I mean, that you, that you would like to do. But if they get changed by the Holy Spirit, don't get mad. Come on. Yep. God knows what's best for us more than we know what's best for us. Amen. And I can attest to that firsthand. There's many times I've, I've tried to do things on my own. I mean, before, before he called me to preach, I was trying to go to, I put on how many hours of college in to trying to do my own thing. I wanted to make money. So I was trying to get in the medical field. Well, 
God said, that's not what you're going to do. He will guide you. And he will walk along with you. Trust him. Trust the Holy Spirit. You've got to trust him. And just remember this. If you're on the wrong path, the Holy Spirit will guide you onto the right one, just like he did Saul. Saul was on the wrong path, man. And in one instance, turned his life. God will let us go so far on doing our own thing. And it's almost like, I think, (laughs) I think he just, maybe he does it to, I don't know, get a rise out of us or something. I don't know. But, But he'll let us go so far and they'll be like, that's not what I'm wanting you to do. That's not what you're called to do. That's not what you're supposed to do. And I can stand here and tell you for sure when you listen to the Holy Spirit and He gives you your calling and He helps you walk along the way to fulfill your calling, it's the greatest blessing other than winning souls to Christ because you know you're in His will. You want to be in God's will. You want to do what he's calling you to do.